Hey, how's it going, guys? And welcome to part two of So You Want to Learn StarCraft. It's a four-part miniseries. If you haven't seen the first part, it's about 30 minutes long, and it goes over the different units and structures that are in the game. Granted, I did get a little drawn out and a little wearied, but don't worry. This one's going to be a lot shorter. Um, we'll just get right into the game. I'm going to show you a ZVP. It is Life versus Patience, I believe. Um, this is from DreamHack not too long ago, so I'll let you guys at least have something to look at and enjoy. The fancy overlay they put together there at DreamHack. Um, I'm going to play a little bit faster speed just so we can get some some of it. Um, I will post the link to the rest of this, however, down below where you can watch it. And you'll actually see how the game ends. I will not play it all for you. Um, so basically, the early game, and that's where we're going to go over today, is by far the most important and fragile time of the game. Your vision is limited, and you have even more limited resources, which are very precious at this point. If you misread your opponent, or you don't have the funds and the scouting information available to you, it can be very hard to react to any sort of early pressure or cheeses that come your way, and your game pretty much ends right here. Um, it is important that for these videos, when I talk to you about the early game, I'm going to talk to you that it goes up to around the 7 minute mark for me. Everyone has a little bit different definition, but from the start to about the 7 minute mark, I consider the early game. And this is where a lot of things can happen, and you're really just trying to get the you know, train rolling, so to speak. The mid game for me runs from about 7 to 12 minutes. You start to get your third up. Um, you start to see a lot of attacks happen at this time. It's where it starts to really get interesting, and you can kind of see where they want to go and how the rest of the game is going to play out at this point. And a late game goes from um, usually 11, 12 minutes and beyond. Um, after they get to thirds, this is when they start to really enforce that technology tree. They start to get their tier 3, tier three units. Um, they're going to get things out there like Colossus, which are not quite tier 3, but um, Broodlords, you might get Tempest, and various other items you'll see and whatnot. Um, if you did watch the units video in this one, you'll see the items. I talked about the Mothership Core, which I wasn't able to demonstrate and show you. You'll be able to see here. you also see the power of Sentries, which is very important. and It's pretty, uh, <laughs> they're a very effective unit. I wasn't kidding around when I was talking about that. So basically, there's three types of openings in StarCraft. Doesn't matter where you are, there's three basic openings, and I'm going to keep all this fairly general for you. I'm not going to get too much detail. You have your normal openings. Um, no scouts are sent out too early. All right. As soon as you start, if you see them send a scout out right away, you know something's up. This is kind of fishy, and it's not normal. Um, you'll usually send them out somewhere maybe around 9 drones, 12 drones, beyond, just to get your scouting information. But if they send them out as soon as the match starts, this is a big red flag of something that might happen. So the game will get interesting at this point. Um, also, you're going to see your normal building structures. You're not going to see a forge first without an expansion or anything for a Protoss. That's usually assigned like a cannon rush, for example. Or if they're building buildings outside the base doing some sort of proxy. But I'll get into that more later. So for normal roping, it's, you know, for Protoss, they'll drop your pylon. Usually they'll get a gateway. Or sometimes they'll go pylon um, forge into a nexus. It all depends on where they drop it. Um, as you can see in the video now, he's going to go Nexus, and he's going to get his forge down and use uh, the cannons to help defend that, which is a common technique. Um, it's a little outdated. They do a lot more different things now, but you can still see it. Um, nothing's too fishy about his build. Nothing's crazy. You don't expect anything crazy. So this is a you know textbook definition of a normal opening for the Protoss player. The Zerg, same thing. Um, usually when you see a forward fast expand like this, you'll take your third. Um, nothing too suspicious. It's not going to send up any real red flags to them. And there's that mothership core I was talking about a minute ago. So for Zerg, on the other hand, you're usually going to see like faster hatch. Again, as you see, the 30 took. Um, ZVP, it's sometimes now you'll see them go gas and pool first. Because usually if they don't go hatch first, you'll see gas pool. Just so you're a little bit safer in case they try some sort of two racks push or any sort of early cheese on you. So the key, the <coughs> sorry, uh, clear my throat. <laughs> the key here is that each player is constantly building workers, which is something you'll be able to see in the top left corner. You got pros building, you got drones building, and if you ever see those stop, it's a sign to you that something's happening. There's no reason to stop building workers this early in the game. As you can see, just above the main map, we're only five minutes in. We're starting to get towards the end of the early game. They both scouted each other. They see nothing fishy is going on, so they're ready to play this from now on. Um, somewhat normally, and they'll get into different types of attacks and early pressure, which you'll actually see uh, sort of as mid-game, which is what I'm going to talk about uh, next, which is where your next opening comes in. And that's kind of planning for the mid-game. That's going to be your early pressure. Um, it's going to be your early all-in builds, and they're designed to give you a little bit of a lead where you're going to take a little bit of a sacrifice at the same time. 
you might cut workers in order to get uh, maybe a couple extra gateways up so you can try to get out there and hit earlier when you know your opponent's not going to have as many guys to defend. Try to do some economic damage. Not actually designed to win, but enough to give you a little bit bigger boost than you may normally have had. Um, you're also going to see um, all-ins. Again, if they do something like a, I think it's like a two-gate robo or three-gate robo where you start to get a lot of all-in plays, a lot of immortal all-ins, you'll see uh, a lot of four gates. They start to hit coming around this time here. Same thing with um, Zerg players. They'll start to do like roach builds. I know Hyung has one he used to use where you get out a bunch of roaches and you hit in around six, seven minutes right now. If you look at what he has, obviously they scout this and try to make their defenses based around that. You can do a lot of damage. It's not necessarily an all-in. You do take a huge sacrifice in drone count, hoping you can at least snipe his natural, right? Um, you see a little bit of an unusual play here. It's a little bit early for a third from Protoss, which you'll see get scouted by the Zerg here, seven minutes. Um, but, of course, when you play in this style, they're really setting up for that long game. Um, I don't know if you can see in the very bottom. It is a 27-minute match, so they're definitely looking to extend this a little longer, you might see. Um, the next opening you're really going to see, hopefully we'll see, it's always fun and enjoyable when you see this, is the cheese opening is what they call it. It's kind of a cheap play to get yourself an early win. It's where you want to do as much damage as early as possible without being seen. It's all about being sneaky. And this ties into where I talked about that probe they send out early on. Um, for example, to build pylons, you can try cannon rushing. You can try two racks, um, Protoss pushes, or with the zealots. And these are the kind of things when you look for, and obviously you'll know that right away. They're not going to keep building as many probes. They're going to send that uh, scout out right away and whatnot. Zerg also has a bunch of options for this as well. Same thing with the other game. The, <coughs> sorry, the pressure openings. And there's those wonderful force fields you watch they're very powerful unit where you know zerg will do something like a six or eight pool sometimes they'll do a lot of like baneling busts or some side of mass ling early on um very quick like i said eight pools sometimes ten pools occasionally six pools which are always interesting and again they're designed to do total economic damage in the win game you can almost never come back from it unless you do enough damage um and even then, it's very difficult. If you can kill all of his workers, and maybe you have two to his one, and then it's kind of like a reset on the game. Um, and that's pretty much your your main openings there. You're going to have either the normal one, and you're going to have like kind of what you saw here. It was a little later in the 9-minute mark. We did a little bit of pressure, which is still normal. I mean, it wasn't an all-in or anything. It was just he went to poke in, see what he could do. Use those force fields rather well. Uh, life, of course, being as awesome as he is, held it off very well. And they'll continue on. Um, so unfortunately, like I said, we're not going to watch the rest of this game. If you want to look for it, I will post the link below. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and even if you don't like, still leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I can improve, and then hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to get that up in the mid game. We're getting into more strategies. Kind of what they're looking at, you know, now. That push he did, kind of options, and different kind of things you can look for, and then we'll get into the late game where you start to get those technology trees, and they're really, like, reading each other. What do I need to do this? I mentioned those Protoss death balls. How do I break it and whatnot? So, again, thank you. Um, you all have a good day.